is our president for four more years. Please reveal all the corruption and fraud in this election and show everyone your will. Open doors that no man can shut. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yes! Today, today, Mr. President, we are all in to tell you that you are the greatest president ever and we are all in. God bless America! How come they canceled that out? 
I say we stop the steal. Yes, stop the steal. Stop the steal. Raise those flags up. Raise those bands up. All the way up. All the way up. You guys are amazing. I tell you that much. I want to thank each and every person that came out here all over America to spend your Saturday here with us in Freedom Plaza, Washington, D.C. Because we stand for something greater than ourselves. We stand for America. We stand to keep America great. We stand to make America great. And we stand to fight for the future. I'm 16 years old, and I'm a member of Generation Z. Which means that America is mine for a long time. It's been yours, and I know there's plenty of young people. You guys are fighting for it now, I'm fighting for it now, but I'm fighting so that there's a future for each and every one of us. Ronald Reagan said uh, that freedom is never a generation away from death. I am that generation that's going to keep fighting. We are the hero generation. And with your support, with your fight, with your strength, with your courage, and with your energy, we are going to keep America great for the next 10, 20, 30, and 40 years. We will not let America fall. We will not let America die. We will keep America great. We will make America great. And we will make this nation something to remember for all time. President Trump is one of the best presidents that has ever graced this nation. And we're going to fight for another four years. We're not going to let them steal this election. We're not going to let them steal America. We're not going to stand for a faux Joe Biden presidency. We're not going to stand for it. We're going to fight, fight, fight. And like Trump says, we're going to win, win, win. Say with me now. Win, win, win. Win, win, win. Win, win, win. Win, win, win. Thank you guys so much. And looking out at what must be about a half a million people, I want to just take a moment. Damn right. I want to take a moment to remember somebody that I started out with about 17 years ago who cannot be with us today, but he is very much with us today. He's my friend Andrew Breitbart. Andrew is what we call a happy warrior, and we are happy, are we not? This actually is a peaceful protest, is it not? But happy is only half of happy warrior, because our country is calling upon us now to be the other half. We now need to be warriors. Every generation has had to face an evil of some kind. Typically, it's been from abroad. It was foreign. Now it's domestic. But our Constitution prepared us for enemies both foreign and domestic. We will fight this fight and we will win this fight. But in order to win, you must first know your enemy. And that's what I've dedicated myself to in my writings and my speeches, is to know, because they didn't just come out of nowhere. What you're witnessing now is the fruition of a plan long in the works. You are watching the culmination of a plan that started with the 60s radicals who did not hide the fact that they sought to overthrow this country. They did not hide the fact that they were socialists and they were bad, bad people. One of them goes by the name of William Ayers. William Ayers founded a terrorist group called the Weather Underground. Such despicable human beings that at the very first meeting of the Weather Underground, they took time out to cheer Charles Manson. Because Charles Manson had done, or at least attempted to do, what the Democratic Party was attempting to do, what the radicals were attempting to do, which is to divide and conquer. That's what Helter Skelter meant. Helter Skelter was a cataclysmic race war. And that's what the Democratic Party has been trying to start since the 60s radicals. Since Bernadine Dorn, the wife of William Ayers, approached the bank of microphones and said, Hi, I'm Bernadine Dorn, and I'm going to read to you a declaration of war. 
And they sought to start that war by dividing us by race, which is why when the radicals came along, they didn't join the party of abolition. They didn't join the party of women's suffrage. They joined the party of George Wallace and segregation and Jim Crow. Because it didn't matter to them then or now whether whites hated blacks or blacks hated whites so long as we hated each other. They tried to foment a revolution and they failed because nobody who had lived in the real world, the last of the great generations, wanted any part of the socialism they were selling. Millions had fled that socialism under Hitler to come here. Millions had fled that socialism under Stalin to come here. And millions more went overseas to fight those things. And when they came home, they wanted no part of what they are selling then and now. There's a great story in my book, forgive me, I have to do it, it's called The Woke Supremacy, that's what one does, where Muhammad Ali, the great boxer, went over to Africa to train for a big fight in Zaire. And when he returned, they asked him, the reporters asked him, what do you think of Africa, Muhammad? Now remember, this was a black man from the then democratically controlled South. This was a black man who had already converted to Islam. This was a black Muslim man, they said, Muhammad, what did you think of Africa? And he said, quote, thank God my granddaddy got on that boat. So even back then in the hardest times, people knew that America was in fact great. And so when this revolution failed, they went underground. They, they started something called the Long March Through the Institutions. They took over these schools and turned it into their Ministry of Indoctrination. They took over the news and entertainment industries and turned it into their Ministry of Propaganda. Now they have their Ministry of Social Communications. And it was Mark Rudd, and then I'll finish up, it was Mark Rudd, one of the founders, another despicable man who said it must be wonderful to kill a pig, talking about cops, the bloodier the better. That's the kind of people who trained this generation. You're, you're, you're not booing me, right? <laughs> and you're not saying Bruce, right? Mark Rudd said, the true flowering of the 60s will come in the 90s when we've taken over the institutions. Well, he was wrong only because he missed the obvious. Once they've taken over the institutions, they then had to use them to brainwash successive generations. Well, 30 years from the 60s to the 90s, what's 30 years from the 90s? Which is why they finally taken off their masks. Which is why they're finally calling themselves what they've always been, socialists. It's why they're again killing cops. This has been a long time coming, and this is a revolution that they are attempting. I don't care if they put a smiley face or an old man's face in front of it. They did that with Big Brother. Right, Joe Biden is just a face. He's a figurehead for the evil that lurks behind him. But I will tell you this. I, I will tell you this. We have always been slow to the fight. As Americans, we don't want to fight. We are the true liberals, lowercase l. Live and let live. We've got other things to do with our lives than fight. We got family, we got school, we got we got businesses. We were slow to World War One. We were slow to World War II. We were slow to the Cold War, and we were slow to the Culture War. But we won World War One. We won World War Two. We won the Cold War, and we will win the Culture War.
doing this for a long time, politics, but I have one message that I want to get across to you, and it's so important when you go back home. We have to meet offline. We have to be Sam Adams in the basement of our bars, meeting with our neighbors. We have to fight big tech. We have to fight big media, and we have to fight big money to protect America for my kids and for your kids. This is a seminal moment in our country's history. If we let them steal the election from President Trump, we will never get it back. Our freedom is not coming back. We must rise up, which is why I know every single one of you is here. Thank you. From the Tea Party on, what people don't realize is that Donald Trump was the natural progression of the Tea Party movement and the fight for our Constitution. You must come together. You must stand for your rights. And we must win. Scott Pressler always says it, MVP, this is a movement of love, but we must fight. We must stand up to the liars and the fake news. We must stand up to the big tech oligarchs who want to silence us. We must fight. When we march to the Supreme Court, we have a message to send. This, our institutions have been corrupted and weaponized against we the people. And that's what Joe Biden's agenda is. There is no way that senile old fool be the hardest working and greatest president ever. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. We'll see you at the Supreme Court.
recently, stressed out in a virtual high school while his basketball season is postponed. These are true issues in each of our homes, let alone the security of our country. These are not the hopes and dreams that we have as mothers. Our president has worked so hard to save America, to rebuild America, and to make America great again. So we must stand by him and ask for a valid election. Without a legitimate presidential election, we are no longer the land of the free. So you know what? As moms, we have to pass the torch of freedom. And if the torch is extinguished, there is no hope. The flame must burn bright and illuminate the way for our families. The light must shine in the darkness. And as mothers, we will fight for the torch of freedom because without it, our children and our grandchildren will not be able to radiate and live in America. That is why we stand united for an election that ensures every legal vote must count. President Trump, the mamas are with you. Let us all carry the torch of freedom and may it shine ever so brightly. God bless you. I'm referred to as the Reagan babe. I come all the way back from the Tea Party for 12 years. This is so reminiscent of the Tea Party when we kicked the Democrats' asses in 2010 up and down the ticket. The grassroots, the silent majority is loud and we are alive and well. We are here to stop the steal. Say it with me. Stop the steal. Stop the steal. Stop the steal. Stop the steal. We know. We know this election was stolen. Do we really believe that the party who believes that looting is justified in the name of social justice didn't steal this election in the name of social justice? I refer to myself as the Reagan babe because there were three men that affected my life. Ronald Reagan, my father, and my grandfather. They were all veterans. And they fought tooth and nail and nearly died for this country. And I will do the same. Because I am not going to watch my country be destroyed from within by the communists, by the Marxists, by the socialists, that have found a home in the Democrat Party. Why is it that communists and Marxists and socialists find a home in the Democrat Party? It's because that's where they are welcomed. We don't want to fundamentally transform this country. We will defend it with our lives. We will defend this country with our lives. We will defend this president with our lives. We are going to march all the way to the Supreme Court and our fight does not stop at the Supreme Court. We take the fight back to our precincts. We take them back to our neighborhoods and we make for damn sure that our local elected officials are elected fairly and they are elected squarely and that our voice, which is our vote, is not stolen. Thank you so very much for showing up. Hello, hello, hello! This is the most beautiful crowd I have ever seen in my life. 
My name is Courtney Holland. I'm a conservative activist out of Nevada. And I'm a proud Nevadan here to tell you that Nevada is MAGA country. This election was stolen from us. It is critical to the world that they see what happened in Nevada and across this country with how the Democrats have stolen this election. We here are out here today from all around the country to demand transparency. We want a free, fair, transparent election. And we want to stop the sale, am I right? All right. For five days out in Nevada, I helped lead hundreds of Nevadans standing in front of the Clark County Election Department. We are fired up. And we saw this happen in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in Georgia, in Arizona, because we want to be loud. I ask you all, we can no longer be the silent majority. We need to be the loud majority. Transparency should not be political. We are here to fight for every person's vote. I don't care if you're a Democrat, a Libertarian, an Independent, or a Republican. All of your votes matter. All of your votes matter. Every time an illegal ballot is cast, it silences one of your voices out there. And what we are witnessing today is a modern day coup to take over this country. We cannot let that happen. So I have a call to action for all of you. This does not end today. Am I right? 